Alright, welcome back Star Wars The Clone Wars Action Figure Fans. Um, this is part two of my review of the Slave One. And I actually had to redo this video because something happened. I, I did these videos a couple of weeks ago and I don't know, something happened to my uh, part two video and got cut off. So if you've been wondering where part two of this review has been, well, I had to remake it. So. Uh, this is my remake of the of part two of my Slave One review, and um, if you watched the earlier video, you saw that I did the front of the Slave One, and I did the cockpit, I did the canopy, and also the the supposed slot where uh, Han and Carbonite might be stored, and how uh, maybe that's not what it is. I, I'm not sure exactly. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the side and the rest of the Slave One. So as you can see here, on the side of the Slave One, there is a big, huge bay door, basically, that opens up. And there is a, uh, basically, a, a cargo area or operations area. I'm not exactly sure what it's supposed to be in the side and what's really cool about this is that they put foot pegs in there so you can pose your action figures like I've done here so of course I got the crew of the Slave One uh, Boba Fett, Ara Singh, and Bosk and I'm going to move them out of the way, they look great in there one of the neat things about the Slave One is it kind of works as a diorama in a way I'm going to move them out of the way so we can get a better, bit of a better look alrighty so as you can see, if I if I go in there, there's the there's the actual, I guess you call it bridge of the Slave One, where you put the figures in, and there's some control panels. You have to actually apply those stickers there, but those ones came uh, on the Slave One already. These two stickers that you see here, I had to apply those, and you can see there's multiple foot pegs. All right, and the door does lock, unlike the canopy which is kind of loose, it does lock into place like that very well. And hopefully turning the slave one around without knocking everything over. When you look at the back here, this would be where, if this slave one were to scale, the figures, this would actually be the entrance uh, to the slave one. And they put this thing here, and I'm not even going to try to pull it out, well there it goes. It's sort of worthless. I mean, no figure could fit in there. Uh, even Boba Fett, who's pretty short, he's probably like 11 or 12. He can stand right about there. So obviously this isn't meant to be the entrance. The side door is more of the entrance, if anything. So this is sort of just like a worthless little thing to add on to the Slave One. Very hard to walk into place. And then we have this thing here, which is like supposed to be a cell block, and it's basically just like a plastic coffin. So this is supposed to be like the detention area of the slave one, but again, it's pretty cheap. It's kind of rinky-dink. It's at least it locks into place and doesn't come down good. That's about all good I can say for it. All right, moving on to I'm gonna put my camera down here for a second and see if I can get a good shot of the back of this because the actual back of this is pretty cool. Alrighty. Okay, so this is the back of the Slave One where the engines are and a couple other things that I want to point out to you. Very detailed. This here is actually the um, airlock. And if you've watched the, the Boba Fett trilogy uh, on the Clone Wars show, the Rise of Boba Fett trilogy, this is how they, if the if the ship is in space, they get in and out of it. If they're going to dock up with something, this is the airlock that they use. And in the show, Boba Fett is actually trapped in an escape pod that's out of power, and Arresting and Boss bring the Slave One around to rescue him, and they hook up to the escape pod via this little hatch. Um, it's not to scale or anything, but it's pretty cool that they added that on there. Um, so there's the engines, and also they've got the little sonic depth charges, as I like to call them, that Jango Fett uses when he's trying to take out old Obi-Wan unsuccessfully, I might add. And 
right there you can see there's a little release and there's another one right there and those release the depth charges if you wanted to they kind of just fall out but as you can see this is all really well detailed very nice beautiful work and it would look absolutely beautiful if it was painted and would really bring the details out take a lot of paint to do that though so I don't know if I'm going to do that last but not least I want to talk about the cannons here they're actually rocket firing you can see they fold down and everything and they fire but the missiles lock in there pretty well alrighty and that pretty much does it for the slave one we put the missile cannon back down and wrap this video up alright so Slave One is a pretty cool vehicle. I highly recommend. Right now, uh, Toys R Us has the Slave One Battle Pack on sale for like 80 bucks, which is a really great deal because you get six figures, you get two ships, and Slave One itself is probably worth picking up. The fact that you get Boba Fett and Boss with it. Uh, just really sweetens the deal. The Anakin that comes with the the, the pack is pretty cool too because he actually has ball jointed knees rather than just having straight legs. So he's pretty nice too. Um, and of course the the droid is all new. Well, it's a repainted R2. So um, the Slave One is a great vehicle. There's just some problems with it, but it's still pretty cool. I would recommend definitely getting it. I definitely wanted it, and I definitely wanted the Bosk and the Boba Fett figure to go along with it, and, and Boba Fett uh, in the this guy here in the clone training uniform. That's probably the only way you're ever going to get him is if you get the battle pack. So I hope you enjoyed this review, and definitely stay tuned for more reviews. Until next time, may the force be with you. Bye bye.